Good evening and welcome to the Tholands webinar for LCA teachers and thank you so much for joining us this evening. I'm sure you've had a really busy day in school today and um, so thank you very, very much for joining us. Really, really appreciated. Uh, my name is Lizzie Gibbon. I am the sales manager here in Tholands um, and I'm really delighted to welcome Nee Blanche as well. Um, she is the successful author of two of our LCA uh, publications and Neve's going to be talking to you this evening um, to try and really help you to enhance your teaching methods and techniques around LCA, specifically around social education and English and communication. So Neve, we're delighted, has uh, written two fantastic books around those two subjects. Um, Neve's been teaching since about 2012, I believe, Neve, and yeah. um, she's been teaching in Lusk Community College since 2016. So she has loads of experience specifically with LCA. Um, and uh, hopefully she'll impart loads of really good knowledge for us this evening. Now, before I hand over to me, I'm just going to let you know that if you're interested in having, taking a look at her books, um, you'll see that you can check out the books and the digital resources on folands.ie. So if you just head to folands.ie and you can just literally search for LCA today and you'll see those two books available to have a look. Really, really, you can see a flip book, which is like a little ebook, um, and some of the resources as well. Um, there. At the end of Neve's talk, um, there will be a Q&A session, which um, I'm hoping that you'll all take part in. So basically, in order to just ask any questions that you have for Neve, if you'd like you know, any more information on anything specific, all you need to do is at the top of your screen, you'll see that there's a chat function. You can type any questions you have into the chat function, uh, even, if they, even if as they come into your head during Neve's talk, just type them in there and we'll capture them. Um, and at the end during the Q&A session, we'll make sure that we get to them. The other place that you can type in questions, some of you will see that you have a Q&A function at the top of your screen. Don't worry if you haven't, you can just use the chat function. But some of you will see that there's a Q&A function. You can type the questions in there either, but the chat function should work for everybody. Um, so, yeah, with no further ado, I'm going to hand over to Neve, um, who's going to get, be, be giving us a talk for about 25, 30 minutes, I believe, Neve, is that right? That's right, exactly. Yeah. Great. So I'll have a stick it on time. Lovely. Great. <laughs> Thanks, thank please. you. So I'll just share my screen. Um, thanks very much for joining us. So we can see the full uh, PowerPoint at the moment. So if you just click into slideshow and from current slide, we should be able to. Great stuff. That's perfect. Yeah, so that, that's Lovely. you're able to see it. OK, that's great. Thanks. OK, so uh, thanks, everybody, for coming this evening. And, um, you know, it's a great evening and it's finally good weather. So I really appreciate you coming on uh, to hear about the English communications and social education publications that I have worked with with Folans. Um, I'd also obviously just like to say thank you to Folans for organising this event as well. So the structure of the evening is going to be about how the publications in both social education and English and communication can work in the classroom for success for our LCA students. I will then furthermore go through the digital resources that are available for teacher use. They include the PowerPoints uh, for content teaching, all of the curriculum and um, the module description elements and then also our planning documents which you know are necessary for inspections uh, myself we went through a whole school evaluation inspection so it was great to have our um, planning really done well um, in the various areas of curriculum so I'll just go through those as well uh, towards the end so LCA today then the idea being that it is a modern um, text that we wanted the current LCA students, you know, and then we all know the types of students that we have in our classes um, and that the various, various needs and interests and, and everything like that, you know. So I really wanted to make sure that it was applicable for our current LCA students. So what's included is in the student book, we have key assignments and then tasks. Now the task for social education is the contemporary issues task. And then we also have the oral exam 
that is in English and Communications. Then there's sections on exam questions to prepare our students for the social ed exam and the English and Communication exam when they're in sixth year during June. Then again, the content PowerPoints and schemes of work for both fifth and sixth year. So that's just the, the general um, structure of the resource. So I'll start with social education then. The key assignments in social ed, um, we have six modules over the two years, three per year, and they amount to six credits of the student's final mark. Each module holds one credit and they have to complete four key assignments. In modules two and five, you have to have a group based assignment and you have to have an out of classroom key assignment as well completed. And the key assignment tasks that are in the book allow for that. They give the group work activities. They give the ideas of out of classroom and maybe, you know, going on a walk around their community. It could be plotting a journey around the area, etc. So it really allows for students to succeed and complete these key assignments that are set for each of the modules. The layout of the key assignments are module based. So you have module one, two, three, four, etc. Each module has scaffolded tasks for students to complete their key assignment. It's not just one activity. It's the idea that they will have straightforward questions and then they can build on their skills and knowledge as they wait, make their way through to complete the full key assignment. So it just allows students to really engage with the material that they're learning in class and show that they are understanding it, the comprehension develops, as well as then being able to apply that knowledge to their exam. So we're building all types of knowledge and skills within these key assignments. A selling point, I guess, is students can complete these in the book, and that's it, it is in one place. Because I know my students in previous years have been like, oh no, I did do that key assignment and it's on a page somewhere or it's in a different copy or, you know, that." so the idea is that we have it all in record when you are creating an, um, your credit sheets, you're able to then say, do you have them all done? Yes, I do, here's the evidence of them all in one place. So it really allows students to take ownership and responsibility of their own key assignments rather than you having to try and track uh, where they are, etc. Just samples from the book. Um, we have module one here. There's, this is the first key assignment in social ed where we have to look at um, exercises and worksheets on assertive, passive and aggressive behaviour and different communication styles. So as you can see, we have scaffolding, we have various different questions um, and the idea is students work through this and um, it could be in class, it could be a homework task. And then the idea after learning all the information from the short questions is they apply it to a dialogue, which obviously, as we can see, is scaffolded. They have learned the characteristics. They have learned the idea of what way to be passive assertive. And then they're able to apply that to an, their own dialogue, um, which is an extension task. We then have just another example. This is about stereotyping. And the idea is here, again, we have scaffolding. We have students being able to identify characteristics, what they can define as stereotyping from the content that they're learning in classes. They then can apply that knowledge to the different advertisements that are part of the key assignment at work. And then finally, I just want to make uh, teachers aware of this. So there are sections where, you know, the key assignment is to create a collage for the gender stereotyping. The idea here is that students could make quite a large collage and have that displayed in a classroom or in a corridor uh, in the school for, you know, for other people to be able to learn from. And then all they would have to do there is take a picture of that up on a wall and glue it in, you know, print it out, glue it into their um, key assignment book and it's there for record. So, you know, in when the, the school at the end of the academic year, there may not be all these posters around the school anymore because the state exams, etc but they still have the evidence that it's in that book glued in. 
So that idea there is the key assignments. Now, I mean, there's obviously a lot more to them. There's four, there's 24 key assignments. So there's a huge amount of that scaffolding for all key assignments. And it allows students, like I said, to build their knowledge and skill set. The second element of the book is the contemporary issues task. This task is completed in session two of year two. So when students are in sixth year of LCA. The idea is that they are looking at a contemporary issue, an issue that affects society in some way and that they have an interest in it as well because they have to research this, but also work towards improving it. It may be working towards improving their local area, working with an organisation or whatever it may be that they decide to do, but actions need to be recorded as well. The group or individual project you can allow your students to decide that because you know your students best. They're the ones that you know you know if they work better in groups or individually. Um, and the idea is that they're able to do that. I always allow my students to work in groups, but they all have to have an individual project. The project needs to be individual because they are all interviewed on it. So it is very important that they all are able to submit their portfolios individually, even if it was a group project. So the structure of the task is that students have obviously been researching and they have done actions around it. It could be a bake sale organised on uniform day, raised awareness, went into first year classes and thought about the issue. Whatever the actions are, all of them are accountable. Then students in session two, it's usually the end of January, will have an interview and they have to make a two minute presentation of their contemporary issue and then they have an eight minute interview on their portfolio that they submit. So how does this book help students achieve high credits in their contemporary issues task? The first thing it does is help students decide on their topic. It explains what a contemporary issue is. A lot of students wouldn't know that. They may know it as a social issue or uh, a problem in society. So the idea is that it goes through the de definitions. This screen grab here is from the book itself. It gives students some ideas as it may, you know, spark some interest in those particular ideas or they may be able to think of their own around these or completely different. So it helps students. They then have to decide three. They rank them, they answer questions on them to really kind of get into what would work best for me to be able to present a presentation and complete actions for my portfolio. The second thing it does is helping students prepare for their presentation. The idea is it gives examples here of what a presentation could look like, a poster, a pic collage, a PowerPoint. They may have written a song or a poem in response to their um, contemporary issue, an information leaflet, whatever the idea is, but it's a, a presentation. This here on the, the right hand side is a sample of two slides of a student's work that they completed a PowerPoint presentation for uh, within my class. They, they did it on animal cruelty. So it's just showing examples. There's also examples of student posters that my previous students have done in the book as well to really give students an idea of what type of work needs to be presented for their presentation part, which is the two minutes. Then finally, the portfolio. The portfolio is a written report that is assessed by the interviewer. OK, it is really important for students to have all elements added in because the more they're able to showcase the skills that they have learned, the research that they have done and the engagement in their actions, they will score higher credits. You know, so the idea here is that this is the table of contents for the portfolio. Students are able, each page is within the book and it gives instructions on how to complete each page for the student portfolio. The book itself is used as a draft. So students will be able to write in their answers, get feedback from their teacher, and then they type it up using that feedback. So it's really comprehensive to allow students the first draft to 
get their ideas on paper, understand what's expected of them, get their teacher feedback, and then go in really prepared for their eight minute interview on the portfolio. We then have the social ed exam. This is an exam in June of the second year, so when they're in sixth year, and the exam itself is worth 10 credits as well. There are four sections to the exam. We have the oral, short questions where you're given 15 questions and you have to answer 10. I would always tell students to answer all 15 because if they're confident in 10, but they've made a mistake, you know, that, that then is marks. So the idea being you answer them all. They are to answer three out of four long questions. It's important to note that they must answer questions C1. They then get to decide two questions in between C2, C3 or C4. But it's very important that they answer C1 and that they are very clear on that because it is a compulsory question. The idea again is usually students in their social ed exam have time to answer all long questions because they're not a huge amount of writing. They are more comprehensive in terms of asking students to think about their answers and put their words on paper, whereas the short questions are multiple choice so that, that that's where they have the difference. The structure of the social ed exam section is modular and I decided to have this modular based because the idea is that we are trying to prep our students for their exam, for lifelong learning, but allowing them to practice exam questions right from the beginning of fifth year. When they are completing module one, they're able to answer questions on module one in this exam section module two, module three, etc. So the short questions and the long questions, as you can see on the right hand side of the screen, are done in modular basis, allowing for teachers also to plan, you know, rather than looking through an entire exam paper and trying to figure out what questions go where into what module, you're able to then just have it on the module basis within the book. So it's usually easier for planning and for assessment. That was the social ed book. Now I know it's very quick and, and um, as Lizzie said, do go and check out the Folan's website because there is a digital copy of the book there and you're able to see obviously more of uh, the different key assignments, the portfolio pages for instruction and then the exam section. So the key assignments then for the English and communications uh, task, it follows the same structure. I wanted continuity. I wanted students who are in LCA to be able to recognise. Well, in social ed, we have a key assignment book. We have our exam paper questions at the back of the book because that's our last section and English and communications are the same. So there's, you know, collaborative development of skills there to allow our students to succeed. So we have four modules in English and they are worth four credits. So one get one credit per module once again, and it's again over the two years. Students must complete all the key assignments from each module. And I'm sure you are aware if you have the, the fifth year um, English and communications. Um, reflection is really, really important with fifth and sixth year. Um, English and communications because it is a key assignment in every module is reflection and we I recognize that and I decided that I have a section dedicated to reflection and I'll speak about that in a second. So once again scaffolding tasks to, for completion. The idea being that we are developing student skills, we're developing student writing and sh students are able to take ownership and allow for understanding of content being taught in classes. The uh, key assignments, all of them are for uh, from the revised module descriptor of 2021. OK, so this is the new course as. Um, you know, we, we need it. 
So here's an example. We have key assignment uh, from module two. Um, research a subject of interest to you and using a template, analyze the websites consulted. So I've asked students to think of six subjects that they might be interested in. So you can have a social issue, environmental, a personal hobby, period in history, a person's life that they may be inspired by, absolutely anything. They can use those or they can use their own ideas and they list them. They then rate these in order of preference because the idea is that you want students to not just think of the first thing that comes into their head to get the key assignment done, but to really take time to rank their um, issues and their, their subjects that they've chosen. And then the idea is that that's actually reflection as well. You're developing the reflective skills because they're thinking about, well, what would I be interested in? Why did I choose that as one of my uh, subjects of interest? Then they explain why they chose their top one, which will be their research. Following on from that, they have to evaluate or analyse websites. Now, students in general struggle with the idea of evaluation. Usually it's it was good or I didn't really like it. So the idea here is that I've given examples of strengths and weaknesses that students can use to motivate them to really look at different areas of websites. So they could look at the language. Was it very straightforward or did they find it challenging? The name of the author and were they credible? So, you know, being able to see if it is, you know, anybody can access the website and update it, or is it an author who is a historian or a, a reporter, an eyewitness? There is lots of links and not a clear structure, etc. OK, so the idea is that students can use that template to be able to apply it to their own websites. Then there is the website evaluation uh, template. You have the website URL, description of the website. So what was it telling us about? What type of structure is it, etc. And then they recognize the strengths and weaknesses. There are three website evaluation templates in the book to allow for students to develop their understanding around evaluation. Just as a, a sample here, speech and article, I've written all of these. So it's a speech and article. Students are asked comprehension questions on these. I have a letter, an email, report, review, all of the functional writing tasks. And then students get to write their own um, and redraft them to complete the key assignment as per uh, key assignment three. The reflection then is the idea that we have weekly reflections, which will really help in the personal reflection task that's usually anchored to English. You have what happened in week one, week two, week three, etc. for fifth year and then for sixth year as well. Then separate to that or in, in, in conjunction with that, you have the module key assignments of reflection. So module two asks about work experience and students reflecting on their personal strengths and then the um, how have they developed them, how have they identified them and they have to reflect on their engagement with work experience. The oral exam then is worth four credits. Students will be asked a variety of questions about the course and the four key areas are the names of each of the modules. Students are assessed on their communicative abilities. So there's no one word answers. It's the idea that they can hold a conversation and show off what they have learnt in reflective learning, in content and understanding. Those are the four key areas as mentioned. We then, so the way I've done this is section one, we have key terms for every element. OK, so for each section, I have key terms that students are able to use within their communication with the examiner, character, plot, identity, setting, theme, and it continues on. Then I have five to six questions sampled. Would you recommend the text you studied to a friend? Why or why not? giving students reasons as to why or why not. They're able to develop their own answers. They can use these points to work on developing their own answers. 
I then have a sample answer that I've written out um, when I was working with a student and asking them about a book that they enjoyed. And the idea was that they were able to then develop their own. After each of the questions and the, the points that I give to help students answer it, there's a section for them to plan their own answer. Because obviously not all students study the fault in our stars. They may have studied a different text, so they're able to then plan their own answer for uh, their own interview. Again, section four is about song and poetry and drama. So the idea here is our key terms for poetry are listed that students can use key terms for songs and then key terms for drama continued also. Then just another sample question. How do you think costume, props or scenery added to a play you have seen? And again, this is just showing you the structure. There's different points for each so that students are able to use them and develop their own answers to allow for their communicative abilities to strengthen and continue to do so. The final exam then is um, worth eight credits. There's four sections to it. Um, we have the audiovisual section and then written exam. So I've used the sample paper, obviously, because there hasn't been a state exam for this uh, new course. So it was very important that I use the sample paper. And what I've done is I've taken a video, an instructional video similar to the exam, Oh, sorry, the sample paper and have questions on that. And then I have a film trailer, which again is similar to the um, sample paper and I have questions on that. So students are able to, you know, start developing those skills. And as the exams are released year on year, we should be able to develop um, more comprehensive um, questions. Then I have the choosing the functional writing um, and the, the written work and, and reflective response question styles as seen on screen. So again, just trying to develop and have sample papers that teachers and students are able to use cohesively. So that's then the book for English and communications. Again, it's up on Folan's website, so please do check it out. Um, then the digital resources, we have 40 plus PowerPoint presentations for both courses. The PowerPoint presentations range between 15 up to 40 slides. OK, and the idea is that it covers all content. I use the module descriptors, I use the learner outcomes, I use the teacher guidelines to really create PowerPoint presentations that can be successful in the LCA classroom. Within those PowerPoint presentations, as well as content, there is assessments that students can engage with. The schemes of work address all key areas of the curriculum. So we have a sample of the scheme of work here for English. We have learner outcomes. We have the aims that we want to achieve, the resources, and there's various different resources. The PowerPoint, that's just some sample PowerPoint titles. Then you've YouTube, TED Talk, etc literacy and numeracy links, and then different assessment and activities, as well as cross-curricular links to ensure collaborative learning. Then again, very similar, the exact same headings and the learner outcomes, aims, resources again for social ed, literacy and numeracy link, and then the assessment and cross-curricular links also. The PowerPoint presentations, then there are learning intentions for each presentation based on the module descriptor. So students are very aware as to what they have to learn and what's upcoming. The content is to help students prepare for exams and again, assessments throughout. That's just a sample uh, slide as to what uh, the PowerPoints look like. These are other samples. This, um, you know, what I try to make sure is the language is comprehensible for LCA students. There's not too much words on the slides. It's the idea that an image or colour is present in the slides for them to be as appealing as possible for our students. This here was about the, the book cover um, analysis in English. These just are some ideas of the tasks and questions, assessments that you can use as which are included in the PowerPoints as well. 
We then have uh, rules for voting in Ireland and voting in referendums. That's module six of social ed. So again, just showing the content. It's straightforward. It's content that it can be understood um, and simplified also. Again, just some tasks um, and questions, assessments that students can do while uh, working through their class content. So just a reminder then, all components included for success in social education, English and communications are really part of this package and this resource. Um, I've put a huge amount of effort into making a user friendly book to complete, to store all key assignments and to prepare our students for task and exam success. And then obviously for teachers to have schemes and presentations for classroom learning as well. That is. Thank you so much, Neve. That was absolutely fantastic. It was just so clear and it was just great to really just hear the overarching, really, really clear points. And just to add as well, we launched and we published last year the um, LCA Today for Social Education. Mm -hmm. And the feedback from teachers is absolutely fantastic. And, Thanks. you know, I, I'd really urge people to have a good look at it um online i'll just throw that um site back up again just so that people can see it there oh, yeah great um so yeah just literally just go to folans.ie if you want to have a look at either of the books um and you can just use the search bar and just put lca today into the search bar and you'll be able to see it really really easily so we'll move on now to some questions and answers. We've got loads of questions in, actually, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, so you're not going to get off the hook yet, Neve. <laughs> we have some time now. Right, so um, so some of the questions that have come in, really, really detailed questions, but some of them. Um, so the first question that we have is, is there differentiation as part of the coursework resources? OK, so yes. There is. And the right. idea is that the scaffolding tasks allow for the differentiation because, you know, the LCA classroom is a broad range of needs within our classes. So mm -hmm. you're, the, the best thing about LCA is there's no set, you know, amount of writing or understanding and you are able to, as a classroom teacher, have that expectation for your students. So you know if it's four lines long for the last, di the dialogue question I had there for one student, but the whole completed lines for another, then that's that's great work and it's really engaging. So that whole differentiation is because of the scaffolding tasks that really has worked quite well in both classrooms. Fantastic, that's brilliant, that's great. It's so important for so many subjects, but I can imagine particularly in LCA, you could have mm -hmm. such a broad range of, of, of kids there, you know, so I think that's really, really important. Absolutely. And the next question we have, are, are the resources for English and communication novel stroke poet specific? So they're not. And the idea for that was to allow teachers the autonomy to choose what novel and poet that they would like in their class. Because the idea, yeah. you know, I could choose a novel, a poet, and have lots of content PowerPoints on that. And then those themes, those plot lines don't actually appeal to the LCA class in front of the English teacher. Yeah. So instead, yeah. I try to have it that, you know, we can look at plot structure and book genre and those content PowerPoints, and then they can apply them to whichever text or poet the teacher has decided. Fantastic. And that well, that, that, that makes it less pres prescriptive and just more fun for the people in the room, doesn't it? So that's, exactly. You know, that's, that's it. Exactly. Fantastic. That's great. OK, so the next question is, does the whole book need to be completed for key assignment credits to be achieved? No. The idea is that you have additional tasks, uh, you know, because there are, uh, like I said, there are huge needs in LCA. Some students mm you know, have learning difficulties, but others really don't. And they're they're just in there because they're more practical learners. Yeah, so the yeah. whole idea is that you could have extension tasks for students to complete if they've already completed the minimum. Okay. So what I would say is at least 60 percent of the scaffolding tasks should be completed to say that the key assignment has been completed and then the extension tasks can then be used. Great stuff. Brilliant. OK, so many questions. It's absolutely fantastic. So <laughs> the next one is how would you prepare students for the oral exam in English and communications? 
So what I would do is I would use the book like because what I have in the book is those questions and points for the sample questions that were sent out uh, by the mm -hmm. department. Then I have created an entire this. I think it's eight questions per module additional to those and how I would prep my students is to get them talking to each other, pair them up and ask them. OK, so you're going to be the examiner and ask your question, your four questions and think about it, give feedback, because even given the feedback allows for reflective learning as well. So mm -hmm. the idea there is that they're working together um, and they, they they feel less. Nervous, I guess, by talking to each other because they're used yeah. to talking to each other. So that's how I would really try my best to get that oral communication going in pairs to start off with and yeah. then you know the teacher could practice outside with students individually you know to kind of give them that yeah. that pre preparation as well yeah and they'll be far less nervous having done all of that when it actually exactly. comes to it so, yeah no, that's, that's great stuff um so and this is the question that we often get um around our resources um so are the digital resources able to be modified yes they are so right. again the idea there was to allow for them to be um, editable because your scheme of work, you know, you may find different resources that you've used, a, a YouTube clip or a TED talk or yeah. a resource from the local community that you can include. And the idea of a scheme of work particularly is supposed to be a live document. So yeah. it should be active. You should be editing it as the year progresses. And yeah. then the PowerPoints, you're able to take what sections you really want to focus on because there may be slides that you know you know your students aren't going to engage with or yeah, some yeah. tasks that they may not want to you know that they won't engage with so you're then able to remove them or and add in your own to make them personalized exactly. yeah and we do the same for an awful lot of our, of our uh, digital resources it just makes it much much more personal to the teacher that they can do the things the way that they want to do them using all the exactly. good stuff that's there absolutely okay. yeah okay so a whole pile more questions <laughs> just to prepare you. OK, so um, how is the contemporary issue task marked by the examiner? So they have a set marking scheme. The idea is that the portfolio uh, pages that I have included are what they are looking for. The key yeah. questions, the research, the actions. So it's the idea that students really have to go beyond the classroom, that they are knowledgeable about their topic, but they've done actions, they have been active in it. So that could be uh, like, you know, some like my students have gone into first year CSP classes and taught them. They have gone litter picking, they have organized quizzes, all those types of things. And that students are able to deliver that information, yeah. you know, and it, it's very similar to the oral communication task where they have to talk, you know, and they have to develop that communication but also I would make sure that they record you know if they're hosting a bake sale take a picture of them put it in the portfolio mm -hmm. yeah. you know to have the evidence there and um, but the marking scheme is about their engagement and then having those pages completed in the portfolio presented to the inspector fantastic and it's all there in the one place then it's great yeah, yeah. exactly yeah. Yeah. fantastic and this is this is the interesting one because it does affect certain students more than others. So how do you deal with absenteeism when it comes to the tasks? When you when it comes to the tasks, the it, absenteeism is going to affect yeah. the result in their interview. That that's a fact. Um, and you know they do have to have the ninety percent attendance in LCA to get those um key assignment credits awarded. Yeah. You know, so yeah. it is obviously very important. What I do is. I make sure that even if students are absent, they have the research part of the task done. Right. So if they weren't in for the actions, they weren't in for the bake sale, they weren't in for the, at least they have knowledge around the issue. They can say that they were involved in the planning of it, but they were mm -hmm. absent maybe for the actual event. But if they weren't involved in any of it, they can say that they are aware that their class did X, mm -hmm. Y and Z but yeah. that they weren't present, but what they focused on was the knowledge and research. And that's, that's yeah. you know, to allow them to get some sort of recognition for that 
that that's yeah, how I, the best I would... out of the situation. Yeah, exactly. absolutely. Yeah. Great stuff. Great stuff. OK, so this is a question that we often get. and I'll answer this one. So when a school has adopted the book, how do they get full access to the full suite of all the online resources? So um, this is the same as with any Bowen's publication. So basically, once we know as a company that your school has adopted it, so that might either be because we get a book list from the school um, or because um, you know, if the school buys them from a bookshop, so long as we see some kind of evidence that the school has adopted them, um, we organise automatic adoption. Uh, we organise automatic access for the teachers within Folan's Hive. Um, so it just means that the teacher just needs to have an account within Folan's Hive, and that account is linked to that school. And we know that the school is using the book, and then that means that the um, teacher has access. And it's as simple as that. It's all fairly simple. Um, and there's a great um, support team in the in the um, office there. Should anyone have any issues with how to do that, but it's it's fairly simple. So it's it's fairly automatic once we have a book list or a or some kind of proof of purchase from the school. So yeah, that's that's easy. Um, okay, the next one is: Can you recommend any online resources for the social education syllabus? Apart from the ones oh. we already have. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So within the, the schemes of work there, I have various different like YouTube clips, HSC links, different um, agencies that, you know, work with addiction and uh, teenage pregnancy, drug abuse, because, you know, it's, it's, it's social. So, you know, there's lots of different resources and websites beyond just the social ed PowerPoints, because, yeah. you know, we have learners that are visual and kinesthetic and the, that's that whole idea. So we've spun out. There's, there's loads of websites and uh, resources in the in the schemes just to allow for, you know, that more diverse classroom, I guess, you know, that we're Fantastic. we're all living in now. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that this question was asked just before you answered the question, which was, are the PowerPoints available for online, um, online for the English and communications? That's that was that was literally two moments before you answered that question and you went into those. So the answer is wow, yes. Great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, great. So is it possible for an individual teacher to access these resources for just themselves, even if the students ha don't have the workbook? So the answer to that is no. It's very much on the basis of if it, once the adoption and once the school has adopted the programme then yeah once the kids have the book then we uh, make those resources available um and da, 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 i'm just seeing if there's anything else there's a good few questions still here um oh yeah um i bought a class set of books for my fifth year so can i access all of them talking about the resources so yes absolutely um nice comment here excellent need we'll be ordering for september <laughs> Great. I'm delighted with that. <laughs> oh, and another one. Same boat here. Excellent. Brilliant. Brilliant. Um, I clicked out of a meeting by mistake, but can I get back? Oh, yeah. So that's happened. <laughs> I think that's the end of all the actual questions. Lots of lovely comments in there as well. Great. And just Brilliant. for me, I mean, certainly what I think the feedback that I'm getting from, from schools and even when we were at the LTA conferences as well, um, as a company, we're getting so much great feedback about this is really filling a hole for teachers. Um, they've been crying out for something for so long and it just really seems to be doing the job. Um, so thank you so much to Neve for all of that. Um, I'm delighted to hear that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, and if people do have any further questions at all, um, feel free to call the office and uh, we'll make sure that we answer those questions either. So, um, yeah, so take a look at the books online, um, as we said before, and um, that's us. So thank you so much to everybody for joining much. us this evening. Um, thank you to Neve, a really, really excellent um, look through the resources and a really excellent look at everything that's available within those publications. So thank you very, very much for a great talk, Neve. Brilliant. Thank you, Lizzie. Thanks very much for your time as well. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.